Okay, so here this we go. Uh, jumping into Philippians chapter two. Chapter two. Revisited. Re. But Eric, write, uh, write any notes down. you weren't here Sunday. I wasn't here for one either, though. Yeah, that's true. You were gone for both. Nope. I've well, been gone. In the world? So gone. You've been out and about. But uh, rumor on the street is you went to Jamaica. I did go to Jamaica. Did some missions work down there. Yeah. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. I got to preach uh, to a local church uh, up in the, uh, I don't know, up in the hills. It was up, way up there. Way it was up. like an hour and a half drive. It was... Busted up roads and to this little village hmm. with no with no running water. Nice. So that was cool. I got to preach at the Teen Challenge, which was awesome. We also though all all of us we shared at we went to some schools, inner city schools, and got to share there, which was that's cool. Pretty awesome and pretty eye opening. It was great. Mm-hmm. And so it was it was fun. It was it was good. And then we had some fun fun time. We. Swam. We went to river jumping. We jumped in a river from the edge. I don't know how it's. it's I don't <laughs> was it like clear? Cliff, or was it like cliff diving? Like a dirty river. It was river. like blue. It was oh. beautiful blue. Like it clear? looked like somebody treated it with chemicals. Oh, it wow. was like no, but it was not necessarily clear. Like you couldn't see the bottom. Oh, okay. You could only see about a foot, two feet deep. But it was blue and beautiful. Was it fresh water? Hmm. No. No, I don't know. They have alligators? No. Okay. Not in the water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wonder, I like, what's actually swimming around in that river? No. Well, that one guy didn't make it back, so maybe there's alligator. No, I'm just oh. kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did lose my Apple Watch, though. Yeah, you told me about that. I did. I lost. I, I jumped off, and I haven't learned my lessons because it happened in the Bahamas, too, a water slide. Something with you and like the Caribbean, and you're losing yeah. your Apple Watch. But they found it. You can see it. They found it. They swam to the bottom of this river. They said it was 30 feet deep. I don't know if it's 30 feet deep, but they swam to the bottom and got it. So That's I had to pay intense. for it, too. No so. scuba gear. They just. No, just goggles. Just goggles. How long were they down there? But we jumped from. Oh, they were down there for a second. Were they? Yeah, it wasn't like down and back. It was like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? I don't know where he, oh, there he pops up, you know, or whatever. Hmm. But then the platform, we were jumping off a platform that had to have been about 20 feet in the air. Oh, really? Yeah, and so it was deep enough to do that, and you never touched the bottom. Yeah. So. Nice. But they found it, and then I had to pay him 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's messed awesome. up. <laughs> I mean that's cheaper than getting a new Apple Watch. <laughs> that that was my logic, and so yeah, it would have been nice if they would have done it out of the kindness of their heart. But yeah, nope. There was no there was no kindness <laughs> no. there. <laughs> First thing, I lost my Apple Watch. How much? We go get it. How much are you gonna give us? I was like, you get it first, and about, then we'll talk. How about some good advice? But it's, it wasn't cool because I had I only had a fifty dollar bill oh. in my wallet, and so I did tell them you find it first because I did not think they were gonna find it, but they did. But they did, and so that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, it was it was a great trip. Got to share Jesus, a little bit of fun, relaxing ish. You know, we we're I can't tell Jason, but we were up at four o'clock one morning five o'clock Eric. a couple other mornings so wow you know, sorry jason <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna expect you at men's prayer this I know. friday <laughs> i know <laughs> six o'clock the overflow i'll consider it <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's cool I, i'm glad you had a good time and then you kind of like got home and turned right around and didn't even get home felicia picked me up from the airport so we flew into charlotte Instead of driving back with the guys, Felicia picked me up, and then we had a Savannah trip planned. And so it was kind of a blessing that I was even able to go on the Jamaica because we had this family vacation. I mean, she won it with her work, and so we've had that for the last, I don't know, since last year planned out. And yeah. so it kind of worked out perfect that I could even do that. You know? Yeah, that's so, awesome. Which it was great. It was super refreshing. Spent time with Ace and Charity. The older one stayed here, and then... uh Savannah's cool, by the way. If you ever have a chance to go, highly recommend it. Hmm. 
if you want to know things to do, talk to Lauren and Austin. <laughs> they are fantastic. And they really pointed like Felicia. Yeah, they pointed Felicia in some cool things and and it was it was great. And so Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, super cool. Well, I'm glad you made it back. I'm glad you didn't decide to stay in Jamaica or Savannah. Uh no. <laughs> that's that's good. No. Um, yeah. We're but good. But while you were gone, the rest of us were just working, toiling, freezing. It was like so cold. <laughs> It's been cold um, in the montañas. That's now how I say mountains. That I'm. Okay. I'm not. I thought only, you went to Montana. No, I now just say montañas. I know you use that on a Sunday, and everybody yeah. knew what you're talking about. Did they? I think because so. it seemed like it, it seemed like not everybody oh. knew. <laughs> I felt like I heard some people cheering. Oh, maybe. Like, yeah, like that's it. <laughs> he did it. Listen to that. <laughs> Our pastor speaks Spanish. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> at all. I don't know if we can uh, put this to. up on the internet anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's jump in this today. Right, we're gonna chapter two. We're gonna talk about chapter two. the The weird thing is, is that we actually pick up um, at the end of chapter one, starting in verse twenty seven. Yes, uh, just kind of how within Paul's letter. Um, the idea, the thought line, the the kind of direction shift, the way he kind of changes, uh, uh, not necessarily what he's talking about, but just the flow of, of what he's writing. 27 is really a better breaking point than the, the for, for us, chapter 2. Um, so the idea yeah. really starts in 20, verse 27 of chapter 1. Yeah, one. so chapter 1, 1 through 26 is really like an introduction and in saying, hey, this is where I am. I'm in mm-hmm. prison. I'm in the palace guard. I'm sharing Jesus. And these are some of the cool things that have been happening and what I've learned and what I've grown and what I've noticed. And then in 27, it really starts with like exhortation, like mm-hmm. only live a life, only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. But then he goes on to describe what that is, you know, the mm-hmm. manner of, and it's really 127 through two, um, 18. Yeah. Because then chapter 2, 19 through the end, he gives two examples, Timothy and Epaphroditus, of people he believes that have lived an honorable life, reflecting living a life worthy. Mm -hmm. And then, which I'm excited about this Sunday, chapter 3, Paul goes into his own testimony Hmm. of how he too has lived a life worthy. Mm -hmm. or as an example and so he really sets three people up as an example timothy epaphroditus Mm -hmm. and then goes in depth more about his own life yeah um and so it's kind of like three examples of living that life worthy but really the content of 127 through uh two um 18 are the exhortation of this is how you live a life Mm -hmm. worthy and And jesus being the crux of that with the central example of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so in a really unique way too, cause it wasn't, it's not even just about forgiveness and love that we see in the gospels. Mm-hmm. You know, he really sets Christ up in a super unique way about really this opposition to human behavior. Yeah. Yes. Cause 100%. We, we, we live to protect ourselves we, you know, you look at like drug addicts and gang members and drug dealers or whatever, like we don't care even if we're at the top of a small totem pole, Mm -hmm. like look at like prisons and things. Like if you feel powerful, if you feel in charge, even if it's of the slums, yeah, you know, it's like, that does something to the human heart Mm -hmm. to feel like I am in power. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I'm influential. I have resources in my sphere. Even if my sphere is garbage like that. And and he sets him like the, the portrait of Jesus is so Mm. anti human behavior Mm -hmm. of rejecting power, rejecting, Mm-hmm. not striving for that and choosing in fact 
the lowly place of a servant human form. And I loved actually just to, and maybe you can expound on this, but I loved how you even talked about we, to us, it's not being human. Isn't that bad, Yeah. <laughs> but you really stressed and I loved it. It was so fantastic because it's so true, but him coming from glory, the son, you know, being God in that regard mm-hmm. and then clothing to human flesh to us, it's not that bad, but to that, yeah, when you when you talk about the difference that exists between him as creator and then us as creation and the vast difference, you know, and then literally he, I, I mean, and it, it does it it couldn't say it any better. Literally humbles himself mm-hmm. and removes himself from that place, from that that. You know, and and comes down to a to the lowliness of of us like that. That I mean, Paul. Yeah, it's it's beautiful the way Paul uses this. And whether these were really like that little that a lot of people call it a hymn or that poem mm-hmm. um, that this whole book centers around, um, like the language there and how that's written is beautiful. Like mm-hmm. just how it it shows the progression of what. Jesus did and his descending in into humanity into the earth like onto the cross into death like it's just this like layered thing of showing like not only did he it you know it's just this mm-hmm. like in took a, on the form of a human yes then the form of a servant yep and was obedient yep and even to the point of death, to death. yeah and not only that, but death by crucifixion. By crucifixion. Yeah. Shameful yeah. and disgusting. That's, you know? that's really cool. Yeah, just like how it shows that. And so it's it's beautiful language. Like so whether Paul was the one that wrote that, you know, some people believe that it was like a hymn that was actually very popular maybe mm-hmm. in the church at that time. But whether that's true or not, like the way Paul uses it in this to paint such a like vivid picture of um and I love what you just what you were just saying, like what what it looks like or what when 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 you have when you have heaven and and the culture of heaven established in something like what that looks like and how it operates and Jesus is exemplifying a value system that is found in him and in the environment that he rules and reigns and humility is one of those things mm-hmm. and like Paul is stressing the need um, the absolute need for that in the life of the believer and how we relate to each other. And it, I mean, dude, y- you could spend so much time like, you know, we just like tickled the surface of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunday for me, it was just like, you know, cause you're trying to, you're trying to move through, you're, you're, you're trying to establish the idea, but there's just so much there. So much. Um, and, and it's, it's really incredible, you know, um, but but Jesus just yeah the way you said that but Jesus challenging the status quo of human nature and how we operate you know and and Paul's trying Paul's trying to do that he's saying you know he said have have this mind that was like have the mind of have the same mind mm-hmm. the, some people some translations might say attitude but have the same mind the same line of thinking the same value system the same approach as christ had and then he goes in to talk about how he humbled himself and how you know mm-hmm. and and so it's just but but paul is telling us that's the kind of that's the kind of transformation we need to happen in our thinking and in our behavior. Ultimately, the way we think lends to the way we behave, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. totally. 100%. Like belief dictates behavior. Yeah. And so if we if we truly believe that humility is important, then ultimately yeah. it should start reflecting in our behavior and our treatment to those around us. And I I love I, I think I'm finding more and more within like studying the New Testament church and even just like the content in the new Testament is how much, how much, uh, emphasis is put on not just our relationship with Jesus or, or to God, but how much our relationship to one another really matters. It's like, it's, 
It's kind of crazy. I have a quote that I, I was actually just reading it last night um, on my quote board, and it and it says that it says, "If we really take the scriptures seriously, my eternal salvation not only depends on my relationship with Christ, but my relationship with others as well." Wow. And because you do have, if I don't forgive others, the Father won't forgive me. Mm-hmm. And you know, if if I say I I love Christ but hate my brother. I'm a liar and the truth is not in me. That's yeah. first John. Yeah. And so he, they point out those couple things about like, it is true that if you really take the scripture seriously, eternity does. And I know that's hard because we think by grace through faith only in this, but like there's mm-hmm. other things like those two scriptures that go, no, his relationship to you is dependent on how you express that forgiveness towards mm-hmm. your fellow brother and sister. And, and I want to hit on you. You said this twice, and I don't want to get into chapter three, but you're hundred percent right. Like, what it comes down to is that portrait of Christ. It demands a value system flip. Mm-hmm. Like, we cannot value the same things the world does mm. when we get that that por- portrait of Christ. Yeah. And Paul in chapter three, he's going to get into that. Mm-hmm. Is that what he says? Is this portrait of Christ is when he encountered God, what he valued flip flopped. And now he has a completely different value system. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just use that word twice in that portrait of Christ. And that's, that's so true. The values have to flip. What's important to me is no longer important to me. And what wasn't important to me now becomes extremely important to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, he sets the stage for for this whole idea of what we're talking about and we were, we were just talking before we started recording like just like the genius of paul and like his writing so um obviously the holy spirit inspiring him but like he opens up in verse 27 saying you know that word only there but really what he's saying is irregardless of whether i'm able to come and be with you or not mm-hmm. i want you to understand what what it actually looks like to carry yourself in a in a way that exemplifies the worthiness of a life or a citizenship Mm -hmm. in the kingdom of god and that's that's like when he says let your manner and i talked about this i don't want to get too far into that but i think it's worth mentioning that this all centers around the idea like he starts this whole portion of this part of his writing to the philippians of saying and they understood citizenship because they were all Roman citizens. Yep. Uh, Philippi was a Roman colony. They evaluate. They have. They valued that highly. They. They really loved and were proud of the fact that they were Philippians. You know, they that they were a part of this amazing. Uh, uh, Roman Empire structure and it had benefits and all of that. And so, but it also came with a value system. It came with a value system, a Roman way of thinking, a Roman way of doing business, mm-hmm. a Roman way of considering themselves above possibly other people. Like if you know much about the Romans, like it was an interesting society and how they treated people mm-hmm. and like the caste systems that existed and all of that. And that's that's a whole other subject. But Paul comes out swinging on this and he's saying, listen. Don't don't misunderstand that even though you're a part of this Roman colony, like there's there's a citizenship that su- it supersedes the value system of what you currently live in. And in order to operate according to it, this is what it looks like, you know, and, and I think that for them, they would have understood this language very clearly. Um, the wording that he used in the in verse 27, they would have known immediately what he oh. He's, he's talking citizenship, but he's talking citizenship in another place mm-hmm. with another with another way of doing things. Um, and so they would have very clearly understood that um, because they they understood what it meant to be a citizen in a part of this Roman colony, yeah. which they were very proud of, you know, Um So, yeah, Paul's Paul's messing with them. <laughs> and the thing about it is, and I. I I don't know how well this translated Sunday, but it is an, it's an extremely it's an extremely appropriate and timely word 
to us as Americans. Well, and I think you you hit that, which I was so thankful for. I, I was, I, it's true. But we, the Christian f- faith, when Paul's using that term, you're talking about the Romans, that citizenship, he's also talking about this strong, proud political identity. Yeah. Like yeah. that has its way of functioning, that has its way. And I think it's something that we've lost. And you see that in really tight knit groups, mm-hmm. to be honest, LGBTQ, mm. whatever the next letters are, you see a really tight group identity mm-hmm. that they're extremely proud of. And it's extremely hard to break into that. You also see like I, when I went to the West bank, you see that in the Muslim, the Muslim culture, mm-hmm. you know, Islam is that there is an extremely tight identity mm. where certain expectations, certain values that you are just supposed to do this because you're part of the group. And I think what you see in, in again, Mer- American tends to be like that too. We're super proud, proud to be an American, yeah. you know, and super proud, but you've almost seen like in, in Christian culture is the breakdown of tradition the breakdown of religion, Mm -hmm. the breakdown of putting any expectations whatsoever Mm. on a believer has really been a breakdown in identity. That's very true. And therefore, you don't have any strong, cultural, unified Christian Mm. identity among the church. Mm. And in fact, and I think that in the recent past, you know, it's almost taken a a, f- a flip on the other side, you know, like people don't want to be identified as Christian anymore because yeah. it has not only just a, it has a very negative connotation of people misrepresenting, you know, Christ. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just heard this testimony of, you know, people, you know, sharing, I'm a Christ follower. And that actually, what does that mean? Versus, mm-hmm. you know, when you say Christian, it has all these, this baggage that comes yeah. with it. But I think we've almost broke down identity so much that Paul was more playing on the fact that, you know, there should be expectations. There should be values that are mm-hmm. no brainers. There yep. should be things that, and they have to reflect the kingdom of God, but yeah. 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 And so let's, I guess let's jump into 19. You didn't cover this, but these are two examples, Timothy and Epaphroditus mm-hmm. of people who Paul believes should be set up as examples of people who live a life worthy or kingdom values or kingdom culture, um, and so I guess let's jump jump into Timothy. Why is Timothy set up as an example for as 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 something to imitate or to emulate? Um, I well, I think that at the, at the end of the day, um, one Timothy Timothy has shown himself faithful um, with Paul, like. You know, uh, Paul refers to Timothy as a as a son as a spiritual yeah. son. Um, so we we do know that there's like a deep it's twenty two deep uh, relationship there. You know, obviously Paul has probably been uh, very formative in in Timothy's life, but at the same time, Timothy has obviously um, exemplified not only his faithfulness to Paul to like serve with Paul serve Paul, but also shown a faithfulness in regard to service to Christ. And I think that's probably more so like what, (laughs) what the qualifier is, you know, um, and, uh, I forget what verse it's in, but Paul essentially tells him like, "I, I don't have anybody else that, that is like Timothy that I could send to you that I believe would carry the same care and regard and compassion for you. You know, it, Ultimately, if I can't go, then this is the next best thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really twenty. He says, "I have no one, no yes. one like him who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare." Yep, yep. And and so I think that Paul's able to say that. Why? Because he has seen firsthand Timothy's ability to do that. You know, and and uh, Tim at some point in time, Paul has seen. A, that genuine concern come out of Timothy that doesn't come from a surface a surfaceness with the work of God in your life like there there's something that has happened progressively 
in Timothy's life that has uh, given him the ability to be genuinely concerned for the welfare uh, of this church and and a willingness mm-hmm. to go and to serve them. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think Paul is using him, and and I'm sure there's there's other aspects and other reasons why. But to me, the big thing that would stick out is just because of his faithfulness. Like, and he's been close with Paul. He's served close with Paul. He's seen he's seen what it is to have a life that is given to the purpose of Jesus and to experience pain and suffering and all of these things. And yet Timothy still hangs around, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, he's he's still there. And and so Paul trusts him. There's, there's a level of trust that has been built and there's, there's, there's in some, some way, shape, form or fashion, even though Timothy is probably, you know, maybe considerably younger than Paul at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what that age difference would have been, but, you know, obviously he has proven himself faithful to Paul, but more so in the service of Christ. That's one thing. Verse 22, it says, but Timothy's worth, you know, like a son and a, with a father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. And I think one thing that we miss because we're so individualistic, it's like me making my own, hmm. becoming my own person and my own this and my own that. But Paul is really saying like, like a son to the father, like in, in that they were expected the son to take over the father's business, mm-hmm. the family business, to step into the father's roles where the the transition isn't like this crazy shift yeah. of this new leader. It was like him stepping into what the father has already been doing. And yeah. so Paul, when he's describing that, it's more so that Timothy is like-minded mm-hmm. that Paul looks at him and says, he, he thinks the same way I do. Mm-hmm. He feels the same way I do. He's imitated me. He is ready to step into what I've been doing and it wouldn't be this change. Mm-hmm. It would be a easy transition because he has like a son, like the genetics are the same. I, he's becoming like Paul. Yeah. And so like Paul has a lot of, com- and Paul, and when you read his God, he's super confident and the way that he walked before the Lord. And so for Timothy to imitate that, you know, Paul's like, yeah, this is, he's a dude. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Epaphroditus. Yep. Um, another example here. I think it's interesting because... This is different. Yeah, it is different. Um, and I think, it, I think it needs to be mentioned, if I remember correctly... Like Epaphroditus actually came from the Philippian church to Paul. Yes. And so he, he delivered the money. Yeah, he came delivering the money. Um, so obviously he, he had been communicating with Paul um, about things that were going on in the Philippian church because Paul had some inside information. You see that later in the book uh, about some <laughs> some stuff that was going down between some ladies in the church. And so he obviously he had some insight into you know, maybe some stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and even, even in regard to like some of the things that he's speaking into, um, in these first chapters, uh, he might've felt it necessary to speak some of these things because of things that maybe Epaphroditus was sharing with him or whatever. But, um, you see that evidently Epaphroditus got sick, like mm-hmm. real sick, um, while he was with Paul, almost died, uh, almost died. But verse 27, like even in his sickness, he wasn't concerned about himself. He was more concerned about the church, the Philippian church. He was he was concerned that they that they were going to be effective, affected in a negative way by the possibility of him dying from this Mm -hmm. sickness, which is interesting. Like is that's an interesting uh, thing that. Well, it goes back to chapter one where, you know, we talked about to live as Christ, to die as gain. Mm -hmm. It was like. If I, I'd much rather go be with Jesus. That's what Paul thought. Yep. But he says, it, but I'm convinced that I'm, I'm going to stay with you for your progress in the faith. And so it's almost like Paul saw Epaphroditus or Epaphroditus, whatever, mm-hmm. have that same attitude. He was like maybe thinking to himself, like, I, I, Paul, I'm ready to go be with Jesus. But then yeah. when he thought about, but it's more necessary for me to remain with you for your progress in the faith. And so maybe that's kind of where... Epaphroditus thought, you know, like maybe he, maybe Paul uses it as an example because he saw that same attitude in himself or mm-hmm. in 
Epaphroditus that Paul maintained. Like, he wanted to be with Jesus, but the reality is, is that he saw it more necessary for him to minister to the Philippian church. Yeah. And then, and then like, he, I think, again, um, Paul brings something to light. Like, he, in verse 29, he says, So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. So, obviously, Paul holds this man in high regard because, um, and says, hey, he's deserving of honor. Mm-hmm. Um, he's because he's he's put his neck out there. He's put his life on the line. This dude believes what he says, you know, and he's out here. He's out here just like me living it, you know, and he's, he's the real deal. He's the real McCoy, you know. Um, and I think that again, uh, this speaks to an example or at least something that Paul is, is, is kind of showing forth as like, uh, let this dude be, let this dude, uh, influence you, (laughs) you know, um, because he, he's, he has shown again, he has shown himself to be faithful, um, in his service to Christ. And this actually goes back to, you know, the value exchange. But there's this verse in, um, it's Second Corinthians, chapter eleven, in Paul. It's really verses sixteen through twenty nine. We'll say, and it's this value system change where. You know, you have these leaders in the church that are boasting because they have accolades and, you know, maybe they're wealthy or they have prominence. And in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, so crazy. He says, they're servants of Christ. And then he says, I am more. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to list all his suffering, Mm -hmm. beaten with rods, stone, shipwrecked, hungry, like just all the things. Mm -hmm. And he says, like, these people who are boasting who looked the part who are fancy he says they think they're christ i am more and then he lists all his suffering and i think it goes back to epaphroditus because you know paul is looking at people who have put their life on the line for the gospel yep. and saying these people honor such people mm-hmm. not necessarily the people who are avoiding the suffering, avoiding the pain, who are sitting in comfort, yeah. who are... Wow. And we have a tendency to do that. The mm-hmm. people who look the part, the doctor so-and-so. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is like it makes me think of those missionaries that we just had from Iraq. Mm-hmm. And like those people are worthy of honor. And mm-hmm. I don't want to say you don't want to honor... There's not other people you don't want to honor, yeah. but really in the kingdom of God, it's it's those who can endure hardship and in, and in, in threats for the sake of the gospel. Who like Jesus, man, like crucifixion, mm-hmm. you know, who endured that for the sake of the gospel. Like Paul is even saying that, like at, honor such men because he laid down his his life was at risk for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. It, those were directly connected. Honor such people because he came close to death for the work of Christ. Like that's not just independent ideas. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. connected. Like yeah. honor them because he was willing. Yeah. Again, I yep. can say it a thousand times. Yeah. So that, I mean, that kind of brings us to the conclusion of chapter two. Um, we're gearing up this weekend for chapter three, which you're going to be doing. I'm super excited. I know you're excited. I know you super love chapter brilliant. three. I know you. I, I know you're a big fan. It's like I love chapter one until I got to chapter two, <laughs> yeah. and I love chapter two until I got to chapter three. I don't think chapter four though will be. I think chapter three will be the, the one. Yeah. I, I don't think it gets better in chapter four, even though chapter four is good. I don't think it gets it, better. You kind of get and then just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So excited about this weekend. Excited to hear you jump in that um i'm I'm excited to be uh yeah to to in 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 this regard 
to to get in, to sit and receive this week um, from this book. And I was I actually wasn't here the first message that you gave, kind of in the overview. So we we've both been missing each other throughout this whole series. But, but we'll both be here Sunday, right? That's right. We'll both be here Sunday as and, long as our kids don't get yeah, sick or something. Lord willing. Yeah, Lord willing. Uh, we'll be we'll both be here this Sunday. And, and honestly, I'll tell you, this has made me cons- you know like maybe want to do a book another time in the year yeah, I it's agree. been really fun I agree. to go through you know like philippians and yeah hopefully people are reading it you know doing homework, doing homework. and meditating and stuff and so yeah keep get, that up get it, getting yep. getting it inside of us and uh, allowing it to do the work that it does so well so um thank you guys again for joining us again um this is just simply about us trying to elaborate and take it take a moment to really uh give you an opportunity throughout the course of your week to uh reconsider revisit uh think a little bit more about um and, and maybe, you know, maybe bring some things to light that we didn't have an opportunity to do uh, when we mm-hmm. when we did the sermon. So hopefully you're enjoying this. Let us know. Uh, give it a give it a like uh, on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the, the first, YouTube it's the first channel. time we've said that. <laughs> like and subscribe. We're, we're the worst. Now I feel like uh, I got to put like the bell and the little thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know the drill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, leave a comment. Let us know how you guys are feeling, or come up and and, and let us know. Um, we we feel like this is something that we that is good for the 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 life and health of the church. Um, and and so you know we're giving some time to it each week to be able to do this. And uh, appreciate you guys joining us. And we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday. All right, Eric, you want to close right. this out in prayer? Yeah, sure. Father, we love you, and God, I pray that as we meditate on your word that you would transform us. Lord, I pray that we would think like this, that we would feel like this, that the Holy Spirit would do the work inside of us, and that we would not be afraid. Lord, I pray that fear, that we would let go of fear, and that we would allow just the transformation to happen, that we would trust that the way that you, your kingdom functions is better than the kingdoms of this world. Mm-hmm. And Lord, that it would lead a life of just knowing you, um, being like you, being satisfied and whole, and and, be, and being filled with just life and hope and expectation for, um, for you and, and what you're willing to do in this world. God, I pray right now that you would enlarge our vision for what you are willing to do with us and what you're willing to do in the world. Yes, Lord. And Lord, that the gospel would progress. Mm. Like in Philippians, Lord, that it would move forward and expand, that it would not um, be shrinking in this world. Mm -hmm. And so we love you for the name of Jesus. We live and we thank Mm. you for what you've done for us. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all later. Take care. See ya.